So Sean, have you made any specific changes in your life based off of some of the things you read and studied in Isaiah? He really has pushed me to recognize those who are downtrodden, mm. to reach out better. That, that message matters to me. And because I teach Isaiah so often, I, I'm, I see it a lot. And I think, oh, I got to change. I got to repent. You know? So there have been a, a number of ways reading and studying Isaiah have changed me, I would say. Mm. Thank you, Sean. Luke? Yeah, I think for me, Isaiah in particular, and its influence on my practice, I would say it's the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Sabbath, there are Sabbath commandments in other books of scripture, but I think it's been Isaiah's language around the Sabbath that has mm -hmm. most clearly shaped the way, and then obviously re-articulated by Latter-day Prophets who have also then, you know, this, this language of Sabbath being a delight, Isaiah 58. For me, his language has shaped the way that I, I want my, my Sabbaths to not be about what I'm not doing, but what I am doing. It, it, instead of just being a no, the Sabbath becomes a series of beautiful yeses. And that's, that's Isaiah, like for me, delight. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I remember when I was on my mission, um, I went through a really, really rough time. And, and I'll never forget I, their sister missionary knowing what I had just gone through um, on my mission. She just handed me uh, a, a piece of paper uh, with some uh, verses from Isaiah. Mm. The message was a similar message that we hear often, but just the way that it was said, it just stuck with me. And it was in Isaiah 41. And I'm not one of those guys that remembers verses very well, but th that's just stuck with me. And, and it's, I, I feel like it, it's timeless. <laughs>